What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. I'm sorry for the audio. I am literally in a storage shed slash tool shop with a tin roof in a thunder and rainstorm. But <laughs> as I have nowhere else to film at present, this is just what we got. So hopefully the rain doesn't downpour too bad and you can hear my voice. That said, this video, guys, I'm so pumped about this video. I'm so freaking pumped about this video. This video is something that I've been anticipating for a couple of months now. And to, to lay the groundwork and the foundation, obviously this channel began to exist unexpectedly because I have a sort of novel technique of sharpening where I use a coarse grit stone on one side and a fine grit stone on the other side and I found it to have really, really good results in terms of maintaining sharpness. I sent some knives, three knives, to Pete to be tested and he agreed to test them and the, the results actually, they outsliced knives of the same steel, similar heat treatment by about 40 to 50% in most cases, according to Pete's test. And this sparked a huge array of questions. Why is the edge lasting so long? What are the mechanics? What's the shape of the edge? What does it look like? All of this stuff. So myself and the whole sharpening sort of community around this, <laughs> shoot, there's the rain, <clears throat> have been sort of debating back and forth or proposing ideas in a sort of like friendly, like exploration or discovery of this thing. Now, as most of you know from my drawing that I sent to Pete, which keep in mind, when I sent these things to Pete, I did not know they were gonna do well. I did not realize that the picture was gonna get posted and seen by, you know, 30,000 people or so, so far. So, as I understood it at the time, the edge mechanics might have been caused by a toothy edge. Now, I hadn't looked at scanning electron microscope images of edges at all at that point. And so I didn't realize that that theory is sort of not supported by a lot of scientific evidence. But I reasoned that probably the 6,000 grit stone was creating really small teeth. And the 250 grit stone was creating really large teeth. And the combination of these styles of teeth was actually giving rise to an edge which was both coarse and aggressive and smooth and fine. Now, even before anything of late happened, right off the bat, some guys got the edge, sharpened it that way, and looked at it under a microscope. And they found that the edge was largely linear. It's kind of a little bit bumpy, but it's largely linear. There's not a big serrating effect going on. So I reasoned a couple of other things. I reasoned that maybe this, these large high points of texture behind the edge are holding carbides up there. And when you wear away this fine edge, it sort of gives rise to this uneven edge, which acts like a toothy edge after your fine edge is gone. That's been my sort of theory up until now. Well, to rewind, about three months ago, I reached out to thescienceofsharp.com. I said, hey, my viewers love your work. Would you be willing to sharpen some knives this way and analyze it? So Todd, the administrator of thescienceofsharp.com, got back to me and he graciously and generously agreed to have me send him some test blades that were sharpened with this exact same technique so that he could look at them under a scanning electron microscope and begin to form some more scientific theories about why this sharpening method produces the results of increased wear resistance. Guys, the tests have been done. The results are in. The scientists have analyzed. And I am so stoked to share the results. One of the reasons why is because other than Todd himself, the mechanics of it are probably not what anybody else, including me, expected. I was completely wrong, which means like we have this, this whole new world to sort of like play around with and see how we can accentuate or improve this effect. But it also means we all have a brand new thing to learn about sharpening that we have never conceptualized most likely before. 
guys, I want to show you some scanning electron microscope images of my edge. But before I do that, I should specify that although the sharpening, which is the least technical aspect of this operation, was done by me, all the research and analysis that you will see in this article that I'll send you to, all of the scanning electron microscope images, and all of the findings are done by and attributed to Dr. Todd Simpson from the University of Western Ontario. And this analysis was done in the nanofabrication facility. So in terms of like copyright stuff, that is who this research belongs to. That said, let's take a look at the dual grit edge. Now, if I was to try to explain what Todd has found in an absolute nutshell, and I don't recommend that this is the only thing that you watch, but I want to give you guys a, a bit of a teaser to give you motivation to click that link in the description, check out all the SEM images, and read Todd's analysis of it, because it's, it's really cool. It's like, if you're a sharpening nerd, it's really cool. It's a much more faithful and specific description than I'll give you now. But essentially what he found is that in the sharpening process, the core stone was creating a large burr um, of some shape and of some kind. And when the fine stone hit this side, it actually pushed that burr back in line with the center of the edge. Then you had a small burr, primarily from the small stone, and then this large sort of section of burr from the coarse edge, which has been realigned to the center line of the knife and is made of undamaged steel, but it's outside of the regular triangular sharpening area of the edge. When it's stropped, the stropping has basically removed most of this small burr, but it has left intact, sorry, my pen's terrible, um, this section of large burr. So essentially, I've created a large burr, realigned it with the center of the knife somewhat, and then removed most of the small burr from that. So essentially, I've created a sharpened burr, or like an edge that's sort of on top of your edge. As you wear down this large burr, the thickness of the burr remains the same for quite some time before it reaches the triangular sharpening area and begins to widen. And that's why, even after this edge has been dulled, it can still cut like a, a pretty fine edge for some time until you wear through that thin section of sharpened burr. It seems that the wear resistance and the cutting mechanics are more due to that than anything else. Now for me, this is really cool because it sort of brings to light different sort of mysterious questions that I've had, such as there's a moment in Pete's test of M390 where he says, oh, it's developing a catch in the edge, like a flat spot. And then he sh slices through some more rope and then he says, oh, the, the flat spot seems to be gone. Like this is, this seems to be like a self healing edge. But Todd also noticed that within the burr, it's not all one even size. There's a little bit of size variation. And so actually you can be cutting for a while and then hit a thinner spot that actually has increased thinness of geometry. And I, it, I wonder if that's perhaps what Pete was realizing. Pete also said things like, at first it slices like a fine edge, and then it slices like a coarse edge. And I would guess that the 
initial sharpness doesn't actually last longer than any other apex. So like your hair whittling, your really fine sharpness probably doesn't last longer in a dual grit edge. But you retain this sort of thin profile and this thin geometry along the apex for a long period of time. And that might be why Pete sort of observed some of that phenomena. There's still questions that I have, like obviously this seems to increase wear resistance. Does it decrease the durability of the edge? I don't actually know that yet. I've, I've asked Todd some questions about that. Hopefully we'll get that cleared up with further testing and analysis. I guess it gives rise as well to a whole new set of questions. Like, do you actually need to use uh, an aluminum oxide hone, such as this King 6000 grit stone, because they are gentle to push that burr back? Like, would a diamond um, abrasive actually strip off this large piece of burr really quickly and you couldn't use it? I don't know. Well, we'll probably have to do further testing to discover. I think it's quite safe to say that the cutting nature of the edge though is not because of toothiness as we think of it and that the combination of abrasives is perhaps less important or equally important to the fact that we've actually created a sharpened burr which sits on top of the edge. <laughs> a good burr. Like who would have thought? Like, I just, that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of questions that are opened up for me. I could, I could go on with thoughts that are coming to my mind because I think that now that we know this, there's a lot of testing that, that could be done and a lot of fun things to discover and to see, hey, what are the pros of this? Are there some cons of this? And what can we actually use it for to increase our edge retention or our enjoyment for different tasks? But anyway, for now, I'll just leave you to go read Todd's article. Enjoy. It's awesome. I, I'm so stoked about it. And um, overall, though there's a bunch of questions, I'm just really excited to learn that we've actually, I've, I've accidentally found a way to plant the burr back on top of the edge, essentially creating a second thinner edge on top of your edge that needs to be worn down somewhat before you lose that feeling of, of keenness of, of slicing and cutting. That to me is really cool. I wanna say a huge, huge thank you to Dr. Todd Simpson. Thank you so much. Um, and as I learn more about this and if there's further misconceptions that I've had that get corrected by research, I'll make sure to let you guys all know that. If I find tips and tricks for creating this type of edge better or more effectively, I'll let you guys know about that as well. For now, thanks so much for being on the journey with me. I'll say peace out from the Home Slice channel. Thanks for tuning in. You guys rock.